and they're selling it to us um, as convenience, as something fun. Everybody likes the wireless devices. Uh, but I think that that is the most dangerous part of the, of the program and that it's threatening all living creatures. This is really a focus now of, of your research, and it's pretty powerful. Skywatchers, we'll have a link uh, to one of Amy Worthington's articles called Generation X-Ray. You're saying that um, it's a pretty insidious maneuver to take something that human beings love to do, and that's talk to each other, design it in a way that they're pressing uh, a radioactive device right up against their head. That's right. It is a radioactive device. It is the microwave radiation coming from wireless devices that are in the hands of our children, our old people, and that includes your household cordless phones, uh, your cell phones, Bluetooth devices, wireless laptop computers. All of these devices are just as uh, dangerous as X radiation and gamma wave radiation. Uh, uh, that has been proven now by reflex studies coming from Europe. And as you pointed out in the article, these devices are addictive. In other words, we're in a, a society that's addicted on this technology that's actually ripping us apart. That's so true, and it's not just physically addictive, which, of course, Dr. Henry Lai at University of Washington showed uh, in, in rat studies that it's extremely physically addictive. And when I say it, I mean the wireless microwave radiation from cell phones can be very addictive, but it's also emotionally addictive, especially for, for children. Very scary, but I see children with them in their ears all the time. Yes, They're not even yes. using the cordless devices or anything. Oh, I know. The, well, the average child now, there are actually 30 million of our children under 17 that are completely addicted. They're obsessed with uh, cell phones and other wireless devices. And uh, we know that the average child from, from recent polls is using a, a wireless device on his head up to four hours a day. And when you consider that wireless radiation is the supreme carcinogen, it's a superb neurotoxin. It's a magnificent cardiotoxin. That is, it's very hard on the heart and the circulatory system. It is, bar none, the best mutagen and teratogen that we know of, and that means it causes birth defects. And it has uh, the propensity to, to cause all kinds of nervous system impairments, we know all of these things because that is the latest science. It's there for anybody to see, and we've documented the science, the most recent science, in, in two articles, actually, not only Generation X-ray, Child Victims of Technological Abuse, which was in the Idaho Observer uh, in May, but we've also done a previous article called The Radiation Poisoning of America. That was in the September issue of the Observer, Idaho Observer last year, and, and that's also something you can Google. So both of those articles are very important. If anybody, any sky watcher, and I'm sure the sky watchers are among the most intelligent people we have, so they would, they would appreciate the two articles because they are heavily documented, and you don't have to think it's someone's opinion. This is the latest science. Radiation is lethal. What has been the feedback from these articles? People are very concerned and very glad to have the information. Everyone's so busy, no one has time to dig deeply into the science, and most of it's coming from Europe right now. And, of course, as you know, uh, we have a tremendous media blackout on the subject of wireless hazards uh, in, in the United States because... Uh, there's so much money involved. I mean, even the, the mainstream media is involved with all this wireless advertising, and they simply can't let people know the truth. I mean, this is criminal. I came upon this issue uh, due to personal reasons when I saw four of these microwave towers being installed right near my home on top of the New York Times printing plant, which is about five to 600 feet from my uh, living room window. And that's how I actually came contact with you, if you recall, Amy, and uh, the, the thing is, here is New York City accepting $500 million grant from the Homeland Security Department and so that Northrop Grumman could install this type of technology, not just in front of my face, but all over New York City, right. so people all over the five boroughs of New York City are now in danger from this technology, and yet 
the Northrop Grumman representatives have been going around to the local community boards and explaining that there's nothing wrong, that these are safe because they use very little power. But that's not the issue. It's not the power. It's the type of radiation, as I recall, uh, in our one of our first conversations. Exactly. And because wireless radiation used by these uh, transmitters all over our nation, right now we have about 200,000 uh, antenna complexes just for the wireless communications. And, and it's, it's not the amount of radiation that they put out. That's not the issue because there is no safe amount of a carcinogen. And we know now from the reflex studies, as I said before, and we've, we've got uh, the reflex pictures in the Generation X-ray article, you can see that uh, tw 12 groups of scientists uh, from seven different countries put together a set of slides in which they show that when you irradiate a human living cell with 1,600 chest X-rays, you have a broken down, destroyed cell with uh, the DNA spilling out of the cell membrane. And when you irradiate a, a similar cell with 24 hours of mobile phone radiation, you have the same kind of a broken down, destroyed cell that, that's losing all of its DNA. It's completely damaged. Recently on television, there was a viral video that's been going around YouTube and I guess some of these other um, online videos. And it showed people using their cell phones to pop popcorn. Are, are you uh, familiar with that? Yes, and that turned out to be a hoax. Could you explain that? Well, I think uh, somebody was trying to sell something, and uh, they may have had uh, something hot on the table under the under the table to pop the corn. But no, I can't explain. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, disinformation. You have to be very careful uh, about uh, what you believe because uh, people uh, that are behind the wireless technology want confusion. They want people to just go back to sleep and say, oh, you know, uh, that was a hoax and so it must be safe. So exactly. That's the point I wanted to bring up. Exactly. Is, is they, they make this, this is a hoax. So any, any talk of danger of the cell phones, it's, it's just a hoax now because these people created something that was a hoax. That's that, right. That's very exactly. disturbing. Well, but we just we're going to get past it because the the uh, research is coming in from labs all over the world, from reputable labs, and the latest information is really scary. The latest science is pointing to the probability that the wireless revolution may be intended to drastically reduce the world's population. That is disturbing, and I want to come right back to that. But I wanted to ask you about some of the symptoms that may manifest with heavy cell phone users. You say that excessive use, the, the DNA actually spills out of the cell. What are the symptoms that manifest that could be evidence of, of this type of damage being done? Do people notice it at all? Yes, they do notice it. They notice it in many ways. The problem is because they don't know that there's radiation, really. They don't understand there's radiation coming from the cell tower in their backyard or radiation coming from their phone or their cell phone or their cordless phone. They don't connect their symptoms with, with the cause. And that's the most pernicious and frightening part of the wireless situation. Now, as far as symptoms, within two minutes, the electrical integrity of your brain is completely gone haywire. We know that from many, many studies. And also within two minutes, the tiny little blood vessels in your brain can begin to leak. And they leak albumin and other toxins from the blood right into the brain tissue. And the brain tissue was never intended to have any toxin from the blood enter into those little glial and neuron cells. 